So we're left with proving the uh, chain condition, yeah? Okay, so, right, so which is the most technical part of the proof? And let's see how much we can do. It's two. Hmm? Two times, but this is one break. Yeah, right, it's 12, really. Is that, uh, yeah. No, uh, okay. Right, uh, well, I don't know, but this is also, I mean, it's, it's the most technical part, so let's see how far I can go up with it. All right, so uh, first I need some technical facts, and some of them, uh, are right, okay. So given two conditions, I defined this uh, thing to be the natural amalgamation of them, okay, of Q0 and Q1, which may not be a, a condition. So it's just simply this, is the ordered pair that you get when you close, uh, uh, you know, when you close under the relevant isomorphism so that the copying procedure is respected, okay? Uh, again, when you do so, well, of course, you know, uh, uh, you need, you may get some noise, but <coughs> so, the, but the first lemma is that says that if you have, so you have some beta and you have two conditions in Q beta such that suppose that for every alpha less than beta, if the restriction uh, of the, re if the amalgamation of the restrictions to alpha is a condition, then the uh, amalgamation of the restrictions to alpha plus one is also a condition. So if that's the case, then the amalgamation is a condition. So I'm not giving the proof, but that should be pretty obvious, okay, when you look at the, um, at the definition, okay? Uh, so why am I proving this lemma? Because I will use it later on, okay? So it's saying, okay, so you, it, what you're saying, so again, if you, right, mm -hmm. so you have this, this uh, if, if, you, if you can survive at these success stages for this operation, then you're fine. All right, now, uh, given an ordinal alpha and set tau of edges, I'll call a finite uh, sequence of alpha i's of ordinals uh, a tau orbit if, well, if what it, this means is that I can, I can go from alpha to each of the alpha i's by way of, you know, by uh, uh, via some of, these, uh, some of these edges, right, in the relevant sets, right? So, and I can go, and here I allow to go in any direction. I can go also in the intended direction, which is to the past, but also into the future, okay? So I have the sequence, finite sequence of edges, like this, and the sequence of, uh, of zeros and ones, such that, well, alpha is in the first uh, pair, right? So it's, you know, the first model is n0, epsilon zero, this could be zero, one. Uh, and below it's the corresponding marker, and for each i less than n, well, this thing which uh, is, this ordinal alpha, so the one you, the uh, composition of this, uh, of these functions applied to alpha, right, is such that, well, alpha i is less than the corresponding uh, uh, marker of the, you know, that's gamma i one minus epsilon i, and such that it's in the next uh, element in the next pair, in the first, you know, uh, uh, member of the next pair, if that makes sense. Okay. And of course here, I mean, this, the notation means, of course, is, uh, uh, you know, is, is non-standard. It says this is defined whenever, you know, uh, uh, you know, this psi of alpha is in the domain of the next one, and then you do the keep. Of course, I mean, you know, this, this could have they, the, this, uh, the ranges in the domains of these functions, they, couldn't, they need not be the same. Uh, and then I will call this a descending orbit if uh, alpha i plus one is uh, zero equal alpha i. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> so you see, I mean, this, this notion of orbit is useful because uh, as you can imagine when at some point we will want to amalgamate conditions and then we have to take, look at possible places where I have to look at possible relevant stages that, uh, that I copied alpha into, right? Okay. <coughs> okay, so the lemma two says that if I have a stage beta and two conditions in Q0, Q1, and Q beta, and an alpha which is, uh, right, which is in the, okay, in the domain of the amalgamation, uh, right, then there's some alpha star in the, in the union of the domains of either FQ0 and FQ1, so that alpha is in actually on some orbit of this ordinal, uh, you know, with respect to tau Q0 union tau Q1. So the thing is, um, so in fact, I have something a bit stronger, which is that for any 
orbit for the final object with respect to the final object like this of an ordinal alpha star and any uh, ordinal alpha which is one of these there's in fact a possibly longer orbit for this smaller set of with respect to the smaller set of uh, edges uh, of alpha star on which alpha is okay so now, now the thing is of course i could take i have more edges here but they will all come from you know these two sets of edges by take you know it will be each of the new edges is essentially each of the new edges will be the image of one old edge edge by something else right i mean yeah out, sorry just to find out the minimality of the yeah block. yes exactly exactly yeah and again i'm not proving this, this is a nice uh, you know inductive proof on the length of the orbits and uh, there's a notion of rank that you use to but uh, okay it's plausible right it's <laughs> legally good yeah not prove everything here. Uh, okay. Fine. And now, uh, all right. And now, given some stage alpha and given nodes x and y in uh, kappa cross omega one, if q alpha is kappa cc, I will fix. Uh, I will, uh, f um, you know, some maximal anti chain. <coughs> A alpha x y is the first in some well order definable from phi of q alpha that consists of conditions that decide whether or not x and y are comparable in t alpha. And now, given uh, condition q, I'll say that q is adequate in case two things happen. The first one is that for all uh, non-zero alpha and alpha prime in the support, if I have nodes x in fq alpha and y in fq alpha prime, and alpha and alpha prime need not be the same, they could be different, and uh, Q alpha is uh, kappa CC, then Q series to alpha extends the condition in this anti chain. <coughs> okay, so uh, not only, uh, right, so no, not only Q series to alpha decides the relevant information, whether or not, you know, as, you know, namely whether are comparable or not, but actually I, uh, it extends the condition in this X anti chain. And uh, for every, and then the second uh, condi uh, condition says that if I have an edge, right, uh, like this in tau q and some alpha, which is in, uh, in the, whoops, say that you have an alpha, which is in the, okay, maybe it's a bit too long. <laughs> okay, thank you. So again, so it says that you have an edge here and you have an alpha which is in the support of the condition and, in, and, and is in the lower model, okay, in the N1, then the, the you know, then the pre-image uh, is uh, also, uh, I suppose that the pre-image is also less than gamma zero, then that pre-image under this isomorphism is mm -hmm. also in the domain and this and it's equal and the uh, and the value of the function at that point restricted to this to this relevant set is exactly fq of alpha restricted to that set so this is saying that you have actual symmetry on the working parts not just okay not just this uh the uh you know this partial symmetry that or this partial copying you're not doing this just this partial copying that the, that's required in the definition but you have full symmetry so if that happens then q is adequate Okay, and now let me just call a condition weakly adequate if it satisfies only the first condition here. Okay, now it's trivial to see that the set of uh, weakly adequate conditions is, uh, is dense, just uh, because this is an iteration, this will extend to, and uh, okay. And also, right, and also this uh, lemma is nice. So suppose that Q is weakly adequate and you have an alpha in the, <coughs> in the support and uh, right, and some alpha prime, which is on the descending tau q orbit of alpha, as witnessed by a sequence of edges, okay, like this. And suppose that I have two nodes, x zero and x one. That okay, the heights of the nodes are less than the minimum of the heights of these models. So it means that I will. These are the kind of objects that I will need to copy from one place to another. And Q restricted to alpha forces that X and Y are incomparable in T alpha. Okay, so that happens at the level of the alpha stream. Then Q restricted to alpha prime will force also that 
x0 and x1 are incomparable in T alpha prime. So why is that? Because by weak uh, adequacy, then this condition extends a con uh, of, uh, uh, so it extends some condition that decides this information, right? But then the isomorphisms between these models, they respect, the, respect this uh, predicate using which you, uh, you define the forcing. So that's, that's why. Right, so you can you can, you you transfer this fact down to you know you know along the edges to get to get this conclusion here. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, now lemma four. I'm not giving the proof of it here, but it's not too difficult. Uh, I would is that for every beta, the set of adequate uh, Q beta beta conditions is dense in Q beta. So it's actually. So actually, uh, you know, so, right. So which means that, uh, so maybe we could have defined the forcing in so that requiring that you have this full symmetry, but we decided not to do that because then it would really, you know, it would be, uh, then it would be a real a night, you know, headache at least to prove everything uh, because you will have to, you know, go much more inductive. So it's better to define things in the way I did and then prove this. Uh, can you go back one step? Yeah. So we have the, the treatments T alpha and T alpha prime can be it can be very different. Yes. By mm -hmm. itself, you have that. You have this local information that decided in something that lives in the in N. Yeah. In N zero, and then so it copied to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could you could you also ensure that the, the approximation of the colorings are of the same? They are uncountable colorings, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so let me call the model Q uh, suitable. If Q, well, actually, it's already, I've already used this definition. If it's an elementary submodel of cardinality kappa of the same high enough H theta I used before, or another one, close under less than kappa sequences and which contains the, my iteration, and given a model, a suitable model Q and uh, by ejection phi from kappa to Q and an ordinal uh, lambda, I'll denote the pointwise image of lambda by phi by M phi lambda, right? So this, tip, this is typically an element of sub, elementary sub-model of Q for club many lambdas. Okay, so this is notation. All right. And now this is the notion of chain condition that I will prove, which is a strong known form of chain condition. It's convenient to prove this version. So I'll uh, say that uh, Q beta has a strong kappa chain condition if for every uh, positive set X, okay, that uh, these, are, these were the positive sets in the weak compactness fil filter, and every suitable model Q, uh, which contains uh, this stage and X, and every bijection phi like this, and any two sequences, Q0 lambda, lambda in X, and Q and Q1 lambda. Uh, if, say, they're nice, so they're, if Q0 lambda and Q1 lambda agree on, uh, you know, on M phi lambda, right? So they're, this is a natural notion of restriction for every lambda, then there's some slightly smaller, uh, there's a smaller Y, a uh, positive set, together with uh, sequences Q0, 0 lambda and Q11 lambda of extensions of the Q0 lambda and Q1 lambda, okay, like this, okay, such that whenever I take two indices, lambda less than lambda star in Y, Q0, 0 lambda amalgamated with Q11 lambda star is a common extension of these two guys. One yes, X, yes. One <laughs> script S was, I defined that, the, the oh, set of positive, yeah, uh, this filter. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I take a lot of sets of positive sets, mm -hmm. and then I have to take a lot of sets of positive sets, and then I have to take a lot of sets of positive sets, and then I have to take a lot of sets of positive sets, and then I have to take a lot of sets of positive sets, and then I have to take a lot of sets of positive sets, and then and you and, and assume that they are they, you know that they agree you know nicely mm -hmm. okay you know and, and okay you have this disagreement here okay mm -hmm. 
and then the, then then you will promise that there is a there is a y there is a subset of x. Oh, uh, you know, I mean, they could be completely different yeah. conditions, right? I'm saying for every two sequences of conditions, you know, they could be completely. I mean, this it could be that this it could be that uh, you know a priori this two q zero lambda q one lambda may need not have anything to do with each other, <laughs> right? I mean, one could send, I mean, could they could all, it could be that they all send, I don't know, uh, this node to zero on all these guys and this one, this, yeah. no, this node to one. Yeah, right? but we're saying that mm -hmm. if they agree. Yes. If they agree, right? So, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, we will start, the intended thing is that you start with some fixed sequence and then you keep doing something, you keep refining and still, you still get, you know, you get to, you know, you get this, you know, you get this, pro this, uh, these two ex extensions, and they will be some somehow nice. Mm -hmm. You know, very often, and then you keep extending and doing something. That's that's what we will do, mm -hmm. eventually, right? So it says you have these two two sequences which are sort of nice in the sense that you have this agreement. Mm -hmm. Then you will find, uh, uh, you know, um, a subset uh, of X which is still, you know, uh, fairly large. It's uh, positive. And ex together with the, uh, uh, you know, extend so a sequence q zero zero lambda and q one one lambda. And this is, I wrote this double uh, index for mnemotechnic uh, reason. You will see uh, uh, of conditions such that well, I mean, the q zero zero lambda is an extension of q zero lambda, and same thing for the ones. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, and then if I take two indices, lambda less and lambda star. Then, uh, and I take a look at the, you know, th the left condition, okay, think of zero as left and one as one. The left condition is compatible with the right condition of the upper index in this sense. All right. Uh, yeah, but so still, I'm. Th has to be a condition. Um, uh, well, uh, no. I mean, this is stronger than saying that they are compatible, right? I mean, it no, could be. You want the sum. Yeah, I want something slightly stronger, right? I mean, it could be, you know, you know, uh, uh, it could be in principle. You could have two conditions, two compatible conditions, but, uh, but uh, for which you nevertheless you need to decide that some node. Yeah. You ha you need to extend uh, in such a way that you decide that uh -huh. some. Uh, you know, two nodes with the same color are uh, incomparable. So it's stronger to say that for some it's a compatible. Yes, one. yeah, it's, it's a bit slightly stronger, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the if mm -hmm. part definitely all just Q0 lambda and Q1 lambda are the same. Yeah. And so this looks like a form of the process. Yeah, well, right. it's really, yeah, yeah it's, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But of course here you have pairs of conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. So, but yeah, in any case, this uh, you know this is a strong chain condition. This implies a kappa chain condition. <coughs> so why mm -hmm. is it obvious that this implies the kappa chain condition? Oh, because you just take a, a sequence which are you know q zero lambda is equal to q one lambda, oh. and then you promise that you get. Oh. It, it it's so it implies a Knasser, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, I mean, yeah, but of course, since kappa is weakly compact, every forcing which is kappa CC is also kappa Knasser. Uh, well, um, you could read this off, yes. I mean, this would be implicit, yeah. I mean, this, yeah, they do have this, not with this language, but yes, they have this, yeah. Yeah, yeah so this kind of, uh, you know, framework is essentially laser shell off. So now we're trying to, okay, what am I trying to do? So I'm trying to, to combine their proof of kappa CC, which is highly, you know, non-trivial, with, uh, we have to complicate that because of the presence of the edges. So we have to, okay, we have to deal with that. So that's where most of the complications in the definition came up, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what they're for. So, uh, yes, uh, right, and now, right, and then <coughs> you say that, uh, okay, so now you have a suitable model Q, it contains beta and this bijection, and the Q beta condition Q in the model, and some lambda less than kappa, then I'll say that Q is lambda compatible with respect to phi and beta if whenever I take, if I take Q beta star be the intersection of Q beta intersection Q, 
I have, well, I have that, okay, Q beta star section M phi lambda, this suborder is a complete suborder of this one. But also, uh, right, and the, the restriction of Q to M phi lambda is a condition in that uh, forcing. And that restriction forces in the, in the small forcing that Q is in the quotient forcing. So, okay, that means equivalently that for every extension uh, R of this guy, which, okay, uh, it's, right, in this forcing, that is compatible with Q. That, that's also, that also uh, again, this is also in labor shell R, this extension, a different notation. All right, and now, uh, okay, so, and here's the statement of the kappa chain condition, lemma. Uh, so instead of proving that Q beta has a kappa chain condition, it's more natural to prove a more difficult lemma. Uh, right, so you prove this lemma, which has two parts. So from every, for fixed beta, you prove one beta and two beta, with and and one bit is, is that Q beta has a strong kappa chain condition. That's the first part. And the second part, which of course you need for the first part to go, you know, for the later stages, is that suppose you have a measure one set D and the Q a suitable model that contains this beta and D phi bijection and you have this in Q zero lambda, lambda and D in Q, same thing for Q one lambda. These are sequences of adequate Q beta conditions. Then there's a D prime in F containing D, okay, uh, measure one set, and such that, uh, okay, for every lambda in D prime, uh, if in a typical situation where you have Q zero lambda and Q one lambda, the restriction to this model are you know, coincide, then I can find conditions Q prime zero lambda and Q prime one lambda, extension of this, conditions that are still they are nice, they relate nicely, and they are both lambda compatible with respect to phi and beta. So, okay, so if this second part says that I can, right, I have, so again, I have these two sequences and then I can find, I can refine them so that, uh, that um, you know, I get these conditions which are lambda compatible for most lambdas for all these lambdas. Okay. So, uh, right. So, um, the proof of this lemma is by induction on beta. So, okay, so you fix on beta and you suppose that one alpha and two alpha hold for all lower alphas and you show that it holds at beta. And well, there's nothing to prove when beta is zero, when beta is one, it's trivial because of uh, kappa, the kappa is inaccessible. And the case when beta is kappa plus follows from the equality. So I'll assume that beta is between one and kappa plus. And uh, right, right, so we are this, right, so we're assuming, I should have said, suppose that you know, beta is also you know, positive. And we start with the proof of one beta. All right, so I'll, Right, so I need, so I fix this suitable model Q, this bijection phi, this positive set X, and these two sequences, Q0 lambda and Q1 lambda, uh, in Q of conditions as in the definition of strong kappa CC. So let me go back. Uh, that was here. So I'm given these objects, and I'm assuming that they will agree on this for you know, the restriction to this lambda model will agree. And then, so I want to show, I want to refine uh, X to some Y still positive for which I have this, uh, these extensions of Q0 and Q1 uh, lambda, okay, respectively, so that I can amalgamate for different indices in this four, right? So that's where I want to get. Okay, so let's go back. All right, so, and now from now on, I'll write M lambda instead of M phi lambda. Okay, so, uh, right, so let Q alpha star be the intersection with Q of Q alpha, of, of the model for every alpha. Now by induction hypothesis, I have that Q alpha has the kappa chain condition for every, for all these alphas. Uh, hence, since Q is closed under less than kappa sequences, I have, 
by uh, right, I have uh, that Q alpha star is suborder of Q alpha of size kappa. Uh, in particular, uh, for every alpha in here, uh, Q alpha star forces uh, over V that T alpha doesn't have kappa branches, right? Uh, now, okay, so now given uh, an alpha and a node X and a and an ordinal row bar, which is less than the height of this node, I will denote, well, B alpha X row bar, okay, it's a it's subcanonically chosen uh, maximal anti-chain of Q alpha, which consists of conditions that beside some, you know, some node of at this level rho bar to be below X in T alpha. Okay, so notation. And I can, and now I define the following. So now I have, uh, I have, say so I have two conditions, Q0 and Q1, and two stages, you know, alpha in the first one and alpha prime in the second one. And now I have two nodes. Uh, okay, so X is in the, you know, in the domain of FQ0 of alpha, and Y is in the domain of the other one. Again, I mean, alpha and alpha prime may or may not be equal. And the same applies for 2x and, and y, okay. Uh, and lambda is some order less than kappa. Okay, so then I'll say that mm, x and y are separated below lambda at stages alpha and alpha prime by these, you know, corresponding conditions. And this is via x bar and y bar. Uh, so if there are, okay, there's a, there's a level rho bar less than lambda and there are two, you know, two different, uh, you know, countable ordinals, so that which, you know, they, uh, so that x bar and like y bar being this, the corresponding nodes, so they are, you know, at the same level, but they are different, uh, such that the first condition extends a condition in this maximum anti-chain that forces that x bar is below x in this tree, and a similar thing for the other one, right, for the, the other tree, t alpha, Right, so you are, uh, I'm sort of separating these nodes in some sense. So I have this Tx and then I am deciding, and this is this level rho, which is below lambda. And, uh, and then I have these two different things, right? So this is x bar and this is y bar, they're different. And the, I, it's forced that this one is, uh, you know, the, the, the node at level rho bar below this one and the same thing for the other one. Maybe with respect to different trees, right? So this is T alpha and this T alpha prime. Okay, this kind of situation. So this was a crucial notion in labor Shalach, but they, they had uh, it for just one ordinal because they didn't need to copy. All right. And now uh, comes uh, now comes an ugly definition, but um, uh, it's the last ugly definition in the talk. Okay, it's three slides. Uh, I'll make I'll draw a picture. Okay, I, uh, right. So uh, I don't know how much hand waving you want me to do after this, but let's see. So uh, all right. So say that you have a positive set Y containing X. M, uh, which consists of, you know, intended M lambdas, right? So uh, M lambda is a, is a complete, is a, is a metric substructure of Q. And, you know, its intersection with kappa is lambda, it's closed under less than lambda sequences, fine. Uh, right, and then you have two sequences uh, like this, which is the kind of sequence mm, that we are aiming for. So it's sigma, okay, sigma zero, zero, okay, like this, and sigma one, one like this and these are adequate Q beta star conditions, then I'll say that this is a separating pair for the initial uh, sequence. So this was my initial sig sig sigma zero and sigma one, remember, was, uh, was uh, what was it? Okay, it was, uh, it was the, uh, the sequence for which I need to show that uh, the strong kappa chain condition. Ah, 
right? This should be sigma zero, this should be sigma one. <laughs> so, uh, it's, these are my uh, starting, okay, yes. Okay, so we are, where are we? Uh, here, right? Anyway, so uh, I'll call this a separating pair if the following holds. Q0,0 uh, zero, zero lambda A extends Q0 lambda and Q1,1 one, one lambda extends the other one, fine. Now, for every lambda and, and all non-zero uh, stages in that come from the low one and from the upper one, so alpha and alpha prime, that stay like this. So alpha prime is less than equal to alpha. And all, uh, right, so let me start drawing something. Mm. Okay, so I guess the picture will look like So this is, um, you know, this is m lambda zero, m lambda zero, right? And here is m lambda one. Okay, uh, something like this, right? So for one thing, I say that uh, if I have uh, some alpha, if I have some alpha in the, so in the domain of the lower one, say, and some alpha prime here. Okay, and I have a node uh, in this condition that comes from typically, well, this node here, this x, and some y prime, oh, y here. Then, then these two nodes are separated below then these two nodes here are separated below, uh, and this should be lambda, right. I mean, this is the lower one, so that's, uh, oh, right, no, so first, so, so I'm just anticipating, I'm going to the next slide. So, so first, uh, sorry, I'm looking, uh, right. So I, I'm just looking at one index, and then I'm saying, well, I have, uh, I have two stages here, so lambda, lambda prime, and I have this sort of separation above uh, lambda. Right, so any two nodes like this are separated in this form. Okay, and this is this x bar here. And I'll call this uh, x bar and y bar, uh, right, so I'm for, for the moment I'm just looking at this uh, one fix uh, lambda. I'm talking, I'm calling them, you know, chi zero of these objects and chi one of these objects because I'll refer to this in a moment. So that's a second condition. Now the third condition looks uh, very ugly, but all it's saying is that uh, whenever I, have, I take two indices and I look at the corresponding model, they behave nice. They sort of project nicely, at, you know, uh, uh, at the lower level. Okay. They they say well, uh, you know, the restriction, this restriction, are restrictions are the same and they have the same domain. You know, you know, you could think of this. Is this going to be some, you know? pressing down lemma thing, and then you're saying everything, you know, agrees nicely where it has to be the case, right? You, even, you can even say that the lower, this relevant condition, this lower condition is a member of the next model by separating, you know, okay, so you will get all these things, right? Okay, so you have this sort of filtration, nice filtration like this, okay? Uh, right, now you're uh, looking at, well, now you would define, let's see, the set of relevant levels less than, uh, okay, so take lambda zero, right, uh, take any, you know, lambda zero, lambda one, uh, relevant levels of things that, you know, nodes that come from something in the, in the corresponding condition and relevant heights of things less than the, this lambda, that's the, the corresponding lambda. So let me draw here, maybe this is lambda, right? So this is lambda zero. All these things, all these, when you look at different um, conditions, they are the same, right? So this, you can, you can, you can freeze this. This is this, this uh, bar sigma here, right? Uh, okay, so there, all these things are the same. And then, uh, right, and also I can say, well, if I have an edge of the upper one, which has a uh, height less than the lower, uh, no, no, sorry, I mean less, less than its lambda, right? Okay, then if I take a look at anything in the, you know, in, the, in, the, in, in either of these two models, which is 
which which uh, which is from the lower condition that's in the lower model okay this is sort of required right so I take uh, so again I take this you know this is this lambda I, I take uh, some edge uh, such such that the, the levels of the heights of the models are below this one and suppose that it touches this thing then it is actually in the first part of the model right so it's again it's a, it's something you get by pressing down arguments when you, you can naturally guess. So that was condition three. And condition four is also, looks again ugly, but all the, it's, it's saying is the, is the picture I was anticipating here, that it says, well, suppose that you have two different uh, levels, two different uh, indices, right? And you have some alpha that comes from the lower one and some alpha prime that comes from the upper one. And then um, you, okay, and you take a note let me do it again here. So you have this, uh, okay, this is lambda zero, and then you have this alpha, so this is some alpha, and this uh, x here, and then I take, look at the, the upper one, you have this lambda one, and then you have mm, this other, you know, alpha prime here, and I have to take this lambda, this y prime, and I would like to somehow compare mm, them, right? So I would like to say, well, there's, okay, I would like, to, so what I'm saying is that there is, there, is a, um, there is a copy of this node here, right? There's this x prime, okay, at this level, and there's a stage uh, alpha dagger for, uh, so this was here, this q11, right? Uh, right, and then that is, okay, at this level, right? So there's a, I should say, okay, there's alpha prime and there's another stage alpha dagger for the, the other one, for the, for the right, you know, the right hand, you know, the, the, the right condition of the lower one, right? Uh, and the node there, right? So there's a Y here, such that, this, these projections are the same. Okay, the projection for the X, uh, you know, these projections are the same. Okay. I, I yeah. think I'm missing some, some context of why it's so hard to get the same conditions mm -hmm. as this. Because none of this difficulty comes up when you're working on R1. When you're right. Awesome. Right. That's because you are. You. I mean. <coughs> that's because you have finite conditions, right? And then you have. Hmm? Sorry, yeah. Yeah. And then, but now, now here you have countable conditions, so you don't. You cannot run this. Um, uh, you know the sort of. Uh, well, uh, it's yeah. Elephant support iteration <coughs> of PCC or PCC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Elephant support iteration of all PCC. Yeah. But we have countable support iteration for for specializing. Countries in R1. We, we don't have any problem with the same conditions. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you're talking about specializing for the PCC too, right? Yeah. That's why. It's not in R2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. For R2, we don't have that. Right. Mm -hmm. We make a set with powerful support. Yes. All PCC can set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also, even like one step, no, but even, even one, 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 one step, right? I mean, you can. Uh, for countable, I mean the thing is, you, uh, I mean, how would you prove that even if specializing one tree is kappa CC, right? Okay. I mean, you need that's where you need the weak yeah, compact, right? Yeah, weak compact is called one step, isn't it? Uh, it doesn't solve the iteration. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Just, just, no. okay, just give us mm -hmm. a single kappa CC entry. Mm -hmm. If I take the partial order of specialized CC entries, yeah. countable. Mm -hmm. That is, I mean, uh, unless you collapse this yeah. this weaker compact, I wouldn't. It, I don't see why it should be <laughs> kappa CC. Star yeah. Then yes. Then, then yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And th this is this is the the one. This would be the one step. Mm, mm, you know, the one step uh, version of the labor shellac argument, which would be contained in the labor shellac argument, which would be contained in this argument. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but I mean, let's see, this is separation uh, this separation argument, which is very nice and it's crucial in their argument, which we use here, right? Or an enhanced version of this, but there they, it's easy for them because they only have one stage, right? Mm -hmm. 
here we need to worry about more stages, right? Because of the scalping business, right? I mean, that's where we have, have all these parameters here, right? We have two, two in this, two ordinals. But so far, this is, you know, this is something they consider, exactly. They consider this sort of situation. Okay. And that's it. That's the definition of being, uh, okay. So you can see, I mean, mm, this is the picture some, somehow, right? Uh, so it's, uh, it's this, this sequence of conditions they, which has, uh, has this nice, you know, has this nice shape in this, sen in this, in this sense here, right? This nice separation. And, and it's sort of like this nice filtration. And then you, okay, and I think I'm close that that might wave my hand. So that the, you would prove, prove this claim, which is that uh, if you have this any, you have this separating pair uh, for the initial sequences, then whenever I have take two indices and I take an extra index in between, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, uh, for convenience, then, then I take, when I look at the, 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 the left uh, side, condition for lambda zero and the right side condition for lambda one, they are, the amalgamation is a common extension of them. Now that's, uh, this, is, this, is, this is the most difficult claim and uh, yes, and um, it's getting very late. So I'll, I'll just skip this, okay? Because it would be, it would take uh, at least an hour to prove this. Mm. But it's nothing, you know, it's just, um, uh, uh, so which frees me from writing much in the book. I mean, actually that was the part that was going to take most of the writing. I mean, okay, uh, you, I mean, you can see this kind of thing and you can see the, all the, the, what could go wrong and then you rule all those possibilities out. You have to look at all possible cases. And um, I mean, if you want me to say any, give any more details, but no. Uh, and for that, well, you would uh, use the lemmas that I mentioned in the beginning. Mm. Um, right. Okay, and then well now well then this this claim is uh, you know it looks horrible but it's um, is not difficult. Uh, it says well now you have uh, okay you have these two sequences uh, and it's essentially labor shallow. You, you have this positive set and this uh, you know uh, two sequences uh, in that in it of conditions uh, that sit nicely. Uh, like this, and then, mm, and also, well, and then, okay, they, P0 lambda, P1 lambda, is uh, each lambda compatible with respect, uh, okay, so to phi and uh, alpha, where we alpha here, you have a, you have a stage uh, in F, uh, in the, and F, you know, in the stage in the domain of uh, P0 zero lambda, and one in the P1 lambda, uh, alpha, Lambda prime, and you have nodes uh, coming from the from uh, from these two stages at of height at least lambda, and uh, okay at least lambda. Then I can okay suppose you have these uh, objects. Then I find this measure one set so that when I intersect it with uh, you know the original one, well I can find extensions p two lambda p three lambda. Uh, of this, you know, Q0 lambda, Q1 lambda, uh, this uh, should be a P, sorry. Uh, they look nice, and uh, for each lambda here, well, X lambda and Y lambda are separated below lambda at the corresponding stages by the P2 lambda. So I can do the separation one step, sense, okay? Now, um, right, so for, he for this thing here, you, mm, you use the weak compactness. In a in a in a in a okay in a crucial way okay that's um, and uh, but I don't should I give details on this no I mean it's sort of it's a uh, uh, or look at the in the paper maybe it's uh, okay so uh, yes yeah yes I, it's actually it's it's, it's well it's uh, exactly it's, we know it's necessary yes yeah mm -hmm. yes. So it's an equiconsistence, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea for this is basically that you would say, well, uh, so working, okay, so you would be working in, let's say you would be working in some, in this, <coughs> this, uh, 
oh, I just need to erase the, oh, what the shit. Oh, I just need to, anyway, I just need to write something short. So you would be working in this, um, in Q lambda restricted to some M lambda, right? Uh, and this forcing, right? And say that you do this, suppose that you do this only for one stage, right? And then you have this stage alpha. And you have these two points that you want to separate. This is the labor shell separation. And then you say, well, uh, okay, look at, you know, because this, because the forcing that's sitting outside, because this one is a complete suborder of the big one, okay, uh, right? And this one forces that uh, T alpha, you know, restricted to, so that's lambda cross omega one, but this tree does not have lambda branches. That's correct, it forces that. Then, well, but still, you know, below, look at this, the level of this one and of this one, Bel uh, you know, uh, below, uh, and look at, um, you know, we're working below some condition that is, you know, in this forcing, in this forcing, that sits in this model here. Now, for every uh, row bar below lambda, there's a condition that decides the value of the, uh, you know, the projection of this node at this level. And same thing for this one here, right? So, you know, uh, so suppose that all these values were, there, suppose there was only one value for this projection that's, you know, there's a condition in the big forcing that decides this value while being, uh, while being, uh, you know, compatible with, uh, with the, the filter down here, right? While it's projection to this thing being here. Okay. So we're, you're working in this extension. You're working in this. In this extension while doing this reasoning, right? So if this, if this, uh, if, you know, if this value was unique, then you would have a definable branch in this model. You will have a definable lambda branch to this tree in this model. But that's what does not exist. So you have to be able to find conditions which are compatible, so which project to this filter that force different values to these projections. And that's how you find the separations. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that is the classical argument. Yeah. And here's the, essentially the same argument. Okay. Should we specify the tree of determination is different? Uh, yes, exactly, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you better not spe try to specialize it. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Right, so, so, so by the first claim, that was a difficult claim, but I, uh, it's enough to uh, show that there's a separating pair for my uh, initial pair of sequence uh, conditions. And that's, well, and that's easy because it's really proved by a construction in countable many steps using this claim here. Okay and uh, a pressing down argument using the fact that F is normal. So that's how you would find this sort of nice separating sequence in the end. Uh, okay, uh, what else? So most, yeah, most of the, yeah, right. So, so, and then, well, then you would still uh, be left with proving, you know, two beta, so the second, you know, the second uh, conclusion, but that is ex exactly, you know, it's, it's essentially the same argument as in the, in the original labor shallow. So there's nothing really, there's nothing new there. So I'm not going to say anything. Uh, and that, uh, well, okay, so uh, that would conclude the proof of the Kappa chain condition. Uh, so uh, do you, what, what 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 more details do you want in this? <laughs> yeah, or you must be terribly bored now. <laughs> no. <laughs> do you have a preprint? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, what okay. I, I'd say. It's here. I was I was I was planning to write uh, some of this proof on the board, but I think it's I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then well, then there's the notebook question that you were pointing out. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, okay, so you could do this on at every, uh, for every, uh, you know, regular cardinal kappa, the same would be the same proof, even even for omega one, but, and then if you do this for omega one, well, we, we know that 
uh, you don't need a wiggle compact kernel, but if you do it with this method, I wouldn't know how to get, you know, how to do it without the, wig the wiggle compact. That's because because you uh, okay. Uh, that's because uh, the problem is you because you have to you know it's not just the Martin's axiom argument where you do you know you have to to worry about uh, 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 you know one forcing the CCC. Here you have to you have this requirement that you are copying things from at some alpha into some alpha prime, and that you know and 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 for this reason I wouldn't know how to do a classical Martin's axiom argument to prove. You know, just you know, for do to to do this in on omega one with finite conditions, right? Uh, right. So we would still be doing finite conditions, but you would have to do this this framework. Um, and then and then also you could do you know you could do um, you know you could do class forcing where you do this thing for all uh, uh, you know even numbered at all even numbered alephs, uh, you know, living one you know. It, Gap of one cardinal, while you know, preserve, you know, collapsing, you know, high and high more and more weakly compacts. Uh, okay, you still have room to do this uh, for all odd numbered cardinals, but I wouldn't know how to do it at consecutive uh, cardinals. Mm -hmm. Looks hard, and uh, which requires larger large which would require larger large cardinals. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Well, first, congratulations on solving this famous old problem. Thank you. This is the, uh, one of the major open questions in set theory for decades, for a period of time. Uh, here's a funny question for you. Uh, suppose you don't want to specialize in R. Mm -hmm. You want to kill the Suslin trees in R2, mm -hmm. but you want there to still be a special, specialized, I mean, a non statistical oh, I see. pairing symmetry. Right. Keeping G symmetry. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that? I mean, I've never thought about this. Uh, uh, no, I don't know. Other models, you see the main. Other models, I'm not a. You kill the Suslin trees, but you don't make every area symmetry special. There are such models. And without, without the suit. <coughs> so this involves some funny notion of yeah, not quite special, somewhat some special. Weaker specialist. Yeah, weaker notion. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is still on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was uh, the other question was the last one here? The F is a spin time. Yeah, but again, for all four many chambers, so you could do this for all four for many compact. Mm -hmm. But the forcing wouldn't be CCC. No, the forcing would be CCC. Would be CCC. Uh, I mean, let's say, no, I mean, it would be kappa CC, right? I mean, you would collapse kappa to become yeah, okay. uh, alpha one, and then, and then you do this kappa, yeah. yeah. So it will Same be, thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, after the first, after the collapse, it's going to be a CCC. Yeah, yes. Okay. Because it looks like an overkill, yeah, it's yes. Uh, <laughs> It's very, very different. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's 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 really for this uh, very technical reason that I would need the wiggle compact, so it looks suspicious. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any reason one would try to do this when one has one with the large cardinal mm -hmm. instead of finite as well? Right. So what's the it's question? Maybe in another yeah. Oh, you mean the what would be the some other application? Yeah, some other application. Why yeah. did I think that using this technique instead of yeah. uh, traditional iteration uh, on uh, at the level of Aleph one? Well, I mean, this you know we can do this measuring this uh, very strong failure of cost yeah. guessing uh, using yeah. this methodology. So, yeah. oh, is that something that needs to be compact? No, 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 no. I mean, without 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 large yeah, kernels, that's instead of sick. Yeah. But that's, I guess that was your question, right? I mean, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the main question. But you don't need a large cardinal. You don't need any large cardinals for that. But you still have, you still have to actually, by you still using the symmetric system. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, right. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, there you aim at properness, so not CC, oh, right? So that's, so you sh you're proving that some forcing is proper. And for that, you need 
a different, you know, geometry. You need this um, a more, you know, a, a tidier, uh, 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 you know, setup. So that you, you need symmetric systems. Yeah. Here, you just go, you know, just go with, uh, you know, chain conditions. So that's why you don't need any structure on the edges. And I imagine that this is like in, in this time frame, this is similar that you don't know if you need to add structure at the last one or just a Uh, like in the measuring case, mm -hmm. it's so open, right? Where you actually need to. Oh, yeah. right, right. I don't know the answer. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Are there any results like that? Uh, so not that I know. That nope. Anyway to port the to nope. Yeah, I mean that, that's an interesting the, the question you mentioned. So we can do this um, very fairly, you know, strong failure of club guessing called measuring with CH, uh, but we don't know if. Uh, if this measuring implies that uh, there's a non-constructible real. Could be, I mean, for all we know. I mean, so the maybe adding real is the necessary, uh, you know, feature of, uh, you know, force when, you're, when you force such a thing. Nobody knows. I mean, not, uh, at least I don't know, no. It would look, it would, you know, look strange if you do need it though, if it does. Is there any other end of the comment, that we don't know if NS can be saturated. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's. Uh, I mean, people have asked me if this. Uh, yeah. Be amazing to have something like right. that. Right. But the thing is, it would. One many real. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean, how would you use the the fact that you are <laughs> forcing no over? Yeah, how would you use the fact that you're forcing over? Uh, you know, M one. Yeah. Right. Uh, small. Yeah. That I have I no have idea. Yeah. Three and five plus. <laughs> <laughs> Play a role. Mm. Yeah. 